I'm rather a latecomer to the Beofeng UV5RM, the RM standing for Ringway Manchester. This radio has been out for a good few months now, but despite it being a slightly improved version of the classic UV5R, what more can we actually do with it? Well, I could take it to a hill and show you me making an 80 mile contact all day long. I've actually done 140 miles from a hilltop before on 2 meters under really good band conditions, but that's all a bit samey. I see lots of comments online from people saying they're not picking anything up on their Beofeng, so in this instalment, I'll give you the tools to turn this radio into a very inexpensive analog scanner. By the time you finish this video, you'll have tons of information to load into your radio and pick things up. If you want to buy this radio, then there's an affiliate link in the description below. I've said in many videos that you should never share certain frequencies online. Digital frequencies are a big no-go because, as I've said in the past, users realise they can be listened to and very easily opt for encrypted systems. This means they can no longer be listened to and it kills the hobby. There are however many hundreds of analog frequencies out there that are more generic which I'm going to share with you in this video in order to educate you on where certain things are and what sort of things you can hear. The Beofeng doesn't have the same features as a scanner and of course it won't do the job as well as something like a Uniden 125, but at just a few pounds shipped, it's an effective way of keeping gears on the VHF and UHF portions of the spectrum. I should point out here that transmitting on any of these frequencies without a license is against the law. The UV5RM is one of the biggest Beofeng upgrades we've seen in a long time. It has 999 channels compared to the 256 that the older models have, it has a true AM airband receiver, one button NOAA weather channel access for the North American users, a high resolution colour display and built in USB-C charging. It also has an advertised output power of 10 watts but will come to power testing soon. The menus are straightforward but there's lots of other videos out there showing you how to actually use this radio. We're more interested in what it can do. Other interesting features are a stopwatch, a scramble function, and with the press of a button, the radio will scan the frequency and CTCSS or DCS tone of a nearby radio and then match it, meaning you can join in with friends using other radios. On the front is the much larger display, which is nice. This button switches between memory mode and VFO mode. This one switches between the A and B VFOs. This one scans other radios like I said before. And this one enters the menus. The other numerical buttons allow you to key in a frequency directly as you'd expect. On the side is this orange button for switching on the emergency alarm or FM radio function. The PTT is below it. And the bottom button is for the flashlight and open squelch function. On the right is the speaker and microphone port. And on the back is the 250mAh battery with USB charge functionality. On the top of the radio is the on off and volume control the flashlight and the SMA antenna jack for attaching the supplied antenna. If you're familiar with Beofeng radios, this one isn't a huge learning curve. In the box is the UV5RM and battery, a charger base with AC adapter, a USB cable, a belt clip and wrist strap, an earpiece and microphone, the antenna, and a decent English user guide. Programming software is available online and this radio is supported by Chirp. Programming can be done via the front end too, in a similar way to the UV5R. The programming cable is the standard Kenwood style 2 pin jack. Chirp is like a spreadsheet that allows you to input your frequencies and name them. So before I give you all the frequencies you need, what are the pros and cons of something like this over a scanner? Well, the battery lasts a long time and in receive you'll get a day out of it. It's USB-C chargeable too, which means it can be topped up in the car or by using a power bank. It's a VHF and UHF radio, which means it receives better than a wideband scanner. The reason for this is that scanners are a jack of all trade, master of none. They receive all bands adequately, but they can't compare to band specific radios. The fact that the UV5RM is VHF and UHF only and doesn't go as low as say 27 MHz or as high as 1.2 GHz means it's much more sensitive on the things we're going to be tuning into. 
It doesn't scan as fast as a radio scanner, and you can't divide the channels into banks, which would make it much easier to narrow down your search. But if nothing else, it's a good tool for keeping all your VHF and UHF frequencies in one place, should you be in a situation where you need to tune in on something. Non-urgent theatre team to delivery suite. Okay, stand by. Here we go. Here we go. And um, cue the car. Let me know when it's travelling. Cue the car. Rescue 122 helicopter and Voss Inspira vessel on scene. Security team at the back of Pinewood. Daily crash test call. Please call 3310 to confirm receipt of call. You've been in an hour. Come on, boys. Doing hours about. An hour on, an hour off. So now let's go through all the frequencies you can program into this radio, starting with airband. It does demodulate AM, but like most of the Chinese radios that have seen the addition of an AM chip, it's not the best. It's okay, but not great. So instead, this is a list of all known UHF uplinks for UK airports. These frequencies are all in the UHF band and are FM. They're used for ground vehicles at airports that don't have airband radios to monitor the movements of aircraft. These are live uplinks of the control towers and are usually easier to receive further away from airports when compared with AM air traffic control transmissions. Next we'll look at SATCOM pirates. These are a handful of the most active frequencies for what are known as Fleet SATCOM geosynchronous satellites. You need to look between 250 and 270 MHz. These now disused US military satellites started being used by Brazilian loggers to enhance their radio range. Truck drivers in remote regions beyond the reach of traditional radio range use them to keep in touch with friends and colleagues. Drug dealers, organised crime factions and ordinary citizens alike have all been heard using these satellites and they're well worth monitoring. I should point out here that the supplied antenna isn't good for 220 megahertz, but there are some quite cheap antennas out there that'll do the job. MERS was established by the US Federal Communications Commission in the fall of 2000. It doesn't require a license and uses can't exceed 2 watts, and as you've probably guessed it's a US system. But radios have found their way over here, and you can sometimes hear activity on the frequencies from unwitting users who don't know they're breaking the law. Then there's the supplier's light allocation. This allows radio suppliers such as rental companies to allow clients to use radios back to back without a repeater anywhere in the UK without the need for their own license. Users here include security, construction, hospitality, hire companies and everything in between. Then we have the UK simple light frequencies. This license allows the use of portables or mobile units, but no base units anywhere in the UK. You'll hear all kinds of users on here from security to cranes and shops to private surveillance. They're most active during working hours. Johnny, if you just remind the girls, uh, come off the roundabout, drive between the gap in the bollards and park at the end of the red carpet. It's really obvious, but just to reiterate to the girls. Uh, Johnny, Johnny, sorry mate, can I just check, I'm being totally rattled now that they've taken their mics off or moved their mics. Can I check, can you check with Baker, we 100% have clear audio and their mics are on. Next we have common simple sight frequencies. This is a set of mobile and portable allocations used by people hiring radio systems for businesses or events. They're extremely busy and the nature of their allocation means that users are constantly coming and going. Uh, runner 247 uh, has just come to our location over. 
Uh, okay, control, yep. Yeah. I've got those written down. I'll uh, I'll radio through when they come to our location, over. Uh, okay, roger that. So the suite plus four has come through, and then the numbers you gave me, so I'm waiting on six. It allows the use of a base station and portable and mobile units within a small geographical area, typically less than one kilometre. Polycon is a less commonly heard system these days, but it's the internal headset communication system for rescue helicopter crews and can make for interesting listening if you're lucky enough to catch them. This is one to monitor if you're near the coast or mountainous areas. Next is PMR446, a licensed free band used by security and businesses, as well as people just generally having a chinwag. During the day you'll mostly hear people using the radios as part of their jobs, but during the evenings it can really come to life as a social yeah, band. Yeah. But then the other place, Perth somewhere, like she said, oh, she's in Adelaide. It's like three hours difference, I'm like, oh my god. So that's like four, a total of three and four and a half hours difference between one place and another. And she said, yeah, they're on some eastern time. There's a net on here on Sunday evenings from 8pm in most areas of the UK, so it's always worth tuning in. Now we'll come to a huge allocation, which I've made a separate video on. This falls under the bracket of programme making and special events. On these frequencies, you'll hear television studios rehearsing, talkback and gallery operators controlling a news programme, live events such as football games, outside broadcasts and, well, pretty much anything relating to television production. Thank you. That's all from the BBC News at 6. In a moment on BBC One, we join the BBC News teams where you are. But first, we'll leave you with some images from the day when the Queen became the longest-serving monarch in British history. Goodbye. Again, this will make for some really interesting listening. I've caught live news broadcasts in the local area on there many times. Now we come to the Marine Band, and although most of the action can be found closer to the coast, safety information broadcasts can be heard quite a way inland. There is some usage on inland waterways such as the Thames and the Manchester Ship Canal to name just two. Channel 16, 156.8 is the International Calling and Distress Channel, and can make for interesting listening if you happen to catch an emergency. Channel 0 is a private VHF channel used exclusively by Marine Search and Rescue Units. The use of it is initially controlled by the Coast Guard stations. Liverpool Coast Guard on Channel 16. Rescue 122 helicopter and Voss Inspira vessel on scene. Liverpool Coast Guard coordinating. Date time group 122153 UTC. This is Liverpool Coast Guard. I have to point out here again that like with all the frequencies in this video, you can't transmit on them without the relevant licence. There's also a lesser used UHF marine allocation which you may wish to program in, although I've never heard anything on here. GMRS and FRS channels are growing in popularity in the UK. You'll often hear activity from unsuspecting people who have just bought radios online from China or the United States and started using them without knowing they're operating illegally. GMRS, short for General Mobile Radio Service, is a land-based mobile VHF UHF radio system designed for short-range two-way voice communication and authorised under Part 95 of the US FCC code. It requires a licence in the United States, but some GMRS compatible equipment can be used licence free in Canada. Who are you? Elizabeth! 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 Bucky, uh, someone's on the phone. Will he be in concert hat? Okay? I can't hear you. Right, okay, so if we lo lose each other, we'll just keep in contact, okay? The Family Radio Service, or FRS, is a walkie-talkie radio system also from the United States that's been around since 1996. It uses channelised frequencies around 462 and 467 MHz, and it's not uncommon to hear users in the UK nowadays. Then we come to the fireground allocation where you can hear fire brigades coordinating operations. 
They're sometimes DMR or digital, but often use analogue radios, meaning you can hear them if you're not too far away. Large-scale emergency operations are coordinated on these frequencies, and although they're rarely used in some areas, they're definitely worth having in your radio. Baofeng radios have become the mass-produced staple of cheap two-way radio comms in recent years, and they're often bought by people who use them without programming them first. This is the set of common test frequencies that come programmed in a Baofeng radio, and they can be a hotbed of activity, from shops and businesses, security, and friends keeping in touch. Security team at the back of Pinewood. Security team to the back of Pinewood. Security team to the back of Pinewood. Thank you. If you listen between 144 and 146 megahertz, you're likely to come across amateur radio operators talking to each other radio to radio or with the help of a repeater. Uh, thanks for coming back to me from Oldham. Yeah, maybe I'm the wrong side of the hill for you. Um, Manchester is, uh, I can see Manchester, but um, I'm south side on, on the top of this summit, so that might be why the signal's a little bit weaker. But you're coming through just fine, so thanks for that. Can I just get your, um... This is the two metre band, and these operators have a licence to speak to each other on these frequencies. Certain repeaters are linked to countries like the United States, so you'll often hear American operators talking in the UK. There's also a frequency for the International Space Station within this band too, and you can sometimes hear astronauts talking to ground stations such as schools and colleges. 430 to 440 MHz is another amateur band that's more commonly used for repeaters nowadays, but there's pretty much constant activity and always something to listen into. The top end of the band is used for digital mode, so we don't need to cover those frequencies. So let's quickly go back to power testing. This radio has three power levels. It's supposed to do 10 watts, but on a handheld you don't really need 10 watts. You won't see any difference between 5 watts and 10 watts when using this radio. That being said, it doesn't quite do 10 watts, which is to be expected. You usually see a disparity between power outputs depending on the band too. Low and medium settings are as I thought they'd be. 6 watts, give or take, will do nicely on both VHF and UHF. We can't use 220 MHz here in the UK, but 1.8 is a little low. The same goes for the higher power setting in that band too. As for VHF and UHF, 9.2 and 8.9 watts is about right for a radio advertised at 10 watts, but using the radios at these levels will only drain your battery quicker. Stick to medium power. Trust me, it's all you need. So, I hope this gives you some inspiration into getting more out of your inexpensive Baofeng radio. Put a load of these frequencies into yours, and I guarantee you'll hear some interesting things.